Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look and see how the sample size affects hypothesis testing. And the general conclusion we can always draw is that larger sample sizes are better than smaller sample sizes. Now let's find out why. There's actually two big reasons why that is the case. Well, first of all, let's go back to the equation where we calculate the test statistic t, which is the difference between the the mean of the sample and the mean of the population divided by the standard deviation of the population which is then divided by the square root of the sample size. Now if we rewrite it, notice we can take this, the square root of the sample size, and move it to the right. So now we can see that the test statistic is, is in relationship to the square root of the sample size. In other words, the test statistic is proportional to the square root of the sample size, which means that the larger you make the sample size, the larger you make the test statistic. Now, when you make the test statistic larger, it'll move to the right and is therefore more likely to fall in the critical region. So notice that we have three graphs right here. They all have a level of significance of 0 0.05, which is 5%, so we haven't changed the level of significance. But notice that if the number of the sample size is equal to 9, then we take the square root of 9, and we multiply that times the difference between the mean of the sample and the mean of the population, which is then divided by the standard deviation of the population, and we get a test statistic value equal to 1, which means in this case it does not fall in the critical region, so therefore we fail to reject the, the null hypothesis. And we have a 5% probability of having made an error in that because we set the level of significance to equal, equal to 5%. But now let's say that we change the, the uh, size of the sample to 36. So now we take the square root of the 36, which is twice the square root of the 9, and we've doubled the size of the test statistic. Now the test statistic falls in the critical region, and we're going to reject the null hypothesis. And then, of course, if you make the sample size equal to 100, it makes the test statistic even larger. We definitely want to reject the null hypothesis. But then there's a second aspect of it. Let's read this here. It says, a greater sample size increases the probability that the sample statistic will fall in the critical region. We saw that. The sample statistic gets larger as we use a larger sample size, and it's more likely than to fall in the critical region. But it also will reduce the random variability in the mean of the sample. If you have a small sample size, the distribution is wider and the possibility of getting different values for that small sample size, for the mean of that small sample size, that is large. So in other words, this difference right here between, and you see it in the equation right here, between the sample size and the uh, I mean the mean of the sample and the mean of the population, that difference, well, that will become a more accurate number because it will give you a more accurate value of the mean of the sample. The sample mean will in itself be more meaningful. Let more variability in small samples, less variability in large samples, which means it narrows the distribution of the values of your sample and it'll be a more accurate reflection of the overall population. So in other words, you get a greater certainty that if the test statistic does fall in the critical region and you use a large sample size, you feel that you're more likely to make the right decision. If you have a small sample size and you fall in the critical region, uh, you're not as likely to think of that as being the correct decision when you then uh, end up rejecting the null hypothesis because it came from a small sample size. And so large sample sizes do two things. First of all, it makes the test statistic larger. You're more likely to fall into the critical region, but only, only if the mean also shifts into that region because the mean will tend to be a smaller value if, so in other words, if the sample reflects the population, then the two values, the mean of the sample, the mean of the population, will be very close together. But if the mean reflects 
a different value than the population because the population again is based on the null hypothesis so if you're going to reject the null hypothesis it will be because this value is very different from the mean of the population which is based on the null hypothesis and therefore you're more likely to make the right decision so in both instances it's better to use large samples when you do a sample size and when you do a random, random sample and so therefore you have to kind of strike the balance well how large do you want to make your sample how many tests do you want to run in the case of testing screws instead of testing 36 screws you're now going to test 100 screws is that worth the higher assurance that you'll make the right decision and again it's a balancing act it costs more money it takes more time to test more things but then if you take a larger sample size you're more likely then to make the right decision if you're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis or if you're going to reject the null hypothesis because you did have a larger sample size so again it's a give or take it's not an all or nothing and here again you see how the sample size does affect the way you do hypothesis testing and that is how it's done The sweet spot, ah, that's a good question. So the sweet spot for the level of significance tends to be around 5%. The sweet spot of the sample size depends a lot upon the cost involved in each test. If each one test costs a million dollars, you don't want a sample size of 100, that's 100 million dollars in testing. So then you're willing to take more risk to have a smaller sample size. Statistically, a sample size of 25 and above seems to be relatively sufficient. So 25, 36, 49, yeah, that tends to be kind of the sweet spot. You want to be typically at least 25, 36, 50, somewhere in that range is more than adequate. 100, if it's easy to do the testing, you want to go all the way to 100, that's obviously better if it's not too expensive to do 100 tests. you don't gum up the data you get better data with more testing and a higher sample size it just the expense and the time it takes to do the additional testing that's the only drawback hey sample size of a thousand would be even better that's why whenever they do polls whenever they do any sort of testing the greater the number the better but again it's the expense and the time and the effort that goes into doing it and is it worth that little extra information or assurance that you get out of the the testing so again, the minimum size typically is around 25 or 36 or so. Good questions, by the way.